So now we have about nine minutes for questions. So if did the speakers feel comfortable calling on people or should I ask your question? It sounds like this is a technique, the, the steps that you take and, and stopping them from getting right onto the clicking part would work beautifully for teaching statistics. Cool. But it would transfer really, really well. Um, and the problem solving. So I just wanted to thank you for inspiring me to think that way. All right. Thanks. It would work. You also made a very general point toward the beginning of your talk, saying, I teach something when I want to learn about it. And perhaps this group who does uh, these kind modes of teaching does that more than faculty members generally who are under the impression that they can only teach things that they're already experts in. <laughs> and I think this makes a big difference to be willing to learn together with the students. And it also will get faculty members teaching a broader range of things. I love how you described uh, how you, you were doing flip classroom before you knew that the best term for it. And you were, or you just felt like, oh, this is what I should potentially be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's connected to building on what you were saying. Um, I think another area that you might find a lot of resonance in is adult learning principles and training style approaches mm -hmm. to teaching that are very much in some sort of like step in time uh, <coughs> teach uh, based on the scenario where people learn because they have to do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and especially for your field, I think uh, you find a lot of productive resonance mm -hmm. in the pretty cool stuff too. Thanks. That is, and that's, that is good stuff, uh, just in time and your other. Um, uh, the other stuff that came out of uh, problem solving and, and uh, the cognitive learning stuff. Thanks. Yeah, this is for everyone. So I had a question for the two professors who use the makeup. Um, I actually just used the makeup quite a bit in the past year, and um, so I saw a lot of parallels, and I'm very excited about what you did. Um, but I was wondering if you could speak to us a little bit about how you evaluated students. That was one of my, my biggest struggles. A lot of times I felt like I was saying, okay, well, if you just fill in this metadata and do it by tonight, you'll get 10 points for the final project, which obviously is not a very liberal artsy type of assignment, right? But um, I, I was constantly struggling with kind of like how to scaffold these things. And um, I really um, just have another question on to the professor's examples of um, the students who progressively got better and better at their writing and got a good grade, but this was a middle group. I mean, they weren't, it was, there were some star groups, and this was not a star group, and I purposely chose not a star group, but, but I looked, when I looked at it, I thought, how the hell did they do that? Um, but I guess um, the grading point, actually, for me was, it was fairly easy, because I paired Omega with Google Docs. And so Google Docs provided a lot of the documentation along the way. Um, and so the, and, and especially because I wanted, I was very insistent, not just that they were collaboratively working together, but they were collaboratively writing. And my experience more recently has been that um, if students, I think my students like Google Docs at, at all levels, from seniors through first year, back to first years, um, and they, um, they managed writing projects and they managed collaborative projects better. I don't think it has to be Google Docs, but it happens to be what we have be, been using on campus. And I think, they, um, I think they like the fact they actually don't have to keep scheduling to get together. But they also, I think, I mean, they weren't just writing, they were recording research questions and all kinds of different things on Google Docs. But it also gave me a map. But also, I was very careful about them not, they didn't get the same grade necessarily. Those two students did not get the same grade for that, um, that ex exhibit. They, um, I was able to fine tune it um, according to what I could see of levels of achievement, which included work which was, you know, however hard Adriana worked with Joey, Joey could never reach the same level of writing that Adriana could in one semester. 
you know, it was going to take him longer. And so, um, so I was able to um, not only reward the product, but also reward the way in which um, Adrian had not only made, got to that level and had, had, there were other measures, you know, it wasn't just the quality of the writing, but she had also, she also helped me. I mean, the work she put into Joey was phenomenal. Um, but the other answer, I think, to your question is that um, my experience was um, that by ha I mean, why I did this partly was um, because I feel like when I teach first year writing, um, essentially I feel like I teach them that it is so hard to do that revision and they're going to have to spend so much time doing that revision that they will never bother to do it again in any other class because how could they ever imagine having time to do it in any other class? I mean, I'm exaggerating, but I think about 50% of students are, that I see in upper level classes who I've seen in first year classes um, are not using tools that I've taught them for revision. What worked in this was they were working on such tiny little pieces of writing and they were also working to the idea, both the passion of their relationship to the artifact they really fell in love with those posters. They're magnificent objects and they loved them. And they also knew this was going to become public. And so, they, these, so they, their stakes were different. And so they were willing to work at revision and revision seemed manageable to them. So I was amazed at what they were able to do. I'll just add very quickly to that the, um, the fact that it was working with objects and it had a real world implication was definitely significant to the students and they commented on that in their um, course evaluations but also in the anonymous surveys. And the, the project is divided up into multiple components. The ungraded parts, you lose points if you don't do them. So for example, that student who really hated the process and refused to engage in it, part of the reason why the grade was so low was because the student didn't engage in all the ungraded components which meant they, they lost three points every single time on the final grade, but they had an annotated bibliography that was a certain percentage, their presentation was a certain percentage, the actual MECA site was a certain percentage, and then they had to write a report that was a certain percentage, and the research log was a certain percentage. What I'm changing for this coming fall is the research log will be on Google Docs, so it is impossible for them to write it the entire night before without my knowing that they've done it. Whereas if they handed me a notebook and they didn't think to change their handwriting or their pen color, I can tell, right? So it's very conscious of that. And in terms of evaluating the project itself, we asked them questions uh, in terms of, did this improve your comfort level with ambi the ambiguous nature of research? Did this improve your um, comfort level with technology? Did you learn new skills? Were the workshops helpful? The workshops that they said were not helpful, we then cut the next time around because in general, they just felt that they didn't need to be taught how to do podcasts because they could figure it out themselves, those types of things. And I worked with our library and information services staff to create those surveys because they had more expertise and experience with that, that type of surveying. Um, what surprised me was the comments the students wrote in their course evaluations. And I will add to Jeff's point, if you are a senior faculty member, you're working, you're a, an educational technologist who's working with junior faculty, these kinds of projects are very risky for junior faculty. I'm not yet tenured. The fact that that one student basically said it was the worst class he'd ever done and I was the worst teacher he'd ever had, even though he still speaks to me, um, <laughs> is was a, a something I had to address in my year in self-evaluations and that I had to explain to my senior faculty and the way I could, could back it up was to show them all the other data that I had that showed that in general not only did it meet the learning outcomes but the student feeling of ownership and engagement was extremely high and so that was considered to be an outlier. But it is something to keep in mind that if you're at an institution, particularly if it has a hierarchical tenure structure, which Wheaton does not have, it could be risky for junior faculty to take on these kinds of projects in some instances.